I did a review of this Unity UT8805E multimeter in a previous video, but since that video was too long, I've split the teardown to this separate video. And there were a couple of issues I identified in the review video and Unity have been quick to respond and they say they're gonna send me a new unit for review because the one that I actually received first time appears to be an older revision and the newer batches don't have these issues anymore. So we'll see how that goes in a few weeks time. I'm gonna start the teardown by removing these uh, rubber bumpers and these won't be going back on because I don't really need them. They're mostly in my way. Uh, in fact, I'm, I'm probably gonna start by removing this uh, carry handle, which yeah, you have to pull on the sides and then rotate until you, you just hit the, the, the release uh, slot for these uh, catches. Then there are probably a bunch of uh, screws that I'm gonna have to remove. I'm expecting a very similar assembly slash construction to the uh, PSU unit I reviewed a few weeks ago. And yes, it is a very similar uh, construction to the power supply unit model. Now we're in, uh, we're ready to identify what's going on in here. So let's start by looking at the mains IEC input, which has a switch and fuse. And the wiring looks to be top quality in here. It's nicely isolated on the metal spade uh, crimps with rubber boots. Down there, there's uh, a proper earth connection uh, going down to the metal chassis. And this is the input voltage switch module, also very nicely isolated. It allows you to switch the mains input to the transformer to accept various voltages between 110 and 250 volts. Um, the transformer is very nicely uh, bolted to the uh, side panel. It even has Loctite on the threads of the screws. Uh, but somehow it looks like there was uh, plenty of space available to bolt it to the uh, bottom side of the uh, enclosure in this area. So I wonder why they chose this uh, side panel mounting option. Here's the uh, main board in all of its glory. Again, we see that matte green PCB, uh, which is, is, is a signal of high quality PCB manufacturing and they spared no expense and went with this huge, large PCB panel, uh, which has a lot of unused space in, in this area. It has a date code of uh, week eight of uh, 2023 uh, written here. So it was probably made around that time. The revision number is 1.4 on this particular PCB and it will be interesting to compare this with the new one they're going to send me. There is a female header in here, which I'm going to assume is uh, related to the optional GPIB interface, which has to plug somewhere. I spot a couple of uh, isolators here across that uh, PCB gap. So those are probably interfacing to, uh, to the exterior through the uh, back panel IO. The power supply comes to the PCB through these nice connectors. So everything should be easy to disconnect for this assembly. Here's the noisy cooling fan. And by the way, they tell me that this fan was replaced with a quieter model in the new revision of the hardware. Again, very curious to see that when I'm going to receive the new unit. And here is the uh, model number of this cooling fan, uh, which might be useful if you already own one of these units and plan to change it yourself. It's a two pin five volts fan, no speed control. Its main function seems to be cooling off these uh, two linear uh, voltage regulators. So these are an LM317 and an LM337, which are likely used to generate plus and minus 15 volt rails that power the entire analog section. And if we look at the back, we're going to see nice labeled test points for all of these voltages. These two uh, electrolytics are Fujicon 105 degrees C rated. There's this big metal shielding can that goes on both sides of the PCB and probably houses all of the sensitive uh, analog section. And we're going to take a look at this in a second. The wiring to the back panel 200 milliamp fuse uh, is nice and tidy. Uh, it's tied to this point. Uh, the 10 amp uh, fuse sits here on the PCB and is this nice HRC ceramic fuse. Uh, we have really nice uh, input protection devices, for example, on this uh, current measurement pad, we have uh, two varistors, a surge arrestor, um, plus a smaller uh, bridge rectifier, 
and a Zener diode just to name a few of the ones that stand out. Relays are top quality Omrons. I spot a Caddock precision resistor network under the shield but let me take this apart further for a better look at that section. I removed and disconnected the front panel which very nicely interfaces to the main board via this multi-pin connector and uh, it also had this shield installed. I then removed the one retaining screw which hold the two sides of the shield for the uh, analog section. So now we have a much better view of uh, what's happening in here and I'm probably going to be zooming into some b-roll shots so that you can get a closer view at the individual sections and then I'm going to switch to like a static uh, image to identify some of the chips that we have in here. So there is a lot happening in here, a lot of high quality parts and I'm just going to start with the input connectors uh, which have this uh, very nice uh, custom uh, construction. We have the copper bus bars uh, which are soldered uh, directly into the main PCB and they run up into this plastic assembly and then each binding post has a screw on the back and I quite like this construction. Uh, you tend to see this type of uh, binding post uh, mounting on all of the high-end multimeters. Then we have more input protection circuitry this is all done very properly. We have uh, surge arresters, metal oxide arresters. We have big 400 volt rated film capacitor in here. More Omron relays that are likely in charge of the switching uh, through the various ranges. I see guard rails around the important sections of the circuit. This is a CADOC precision resistor network and these bigger resistors are tied in series. They are part of the input section and the reason they uh, use multiple of them in series is to increase the voltage handling capacity. Then there are a bunch of these uh, three pin resistor networks uh, for which I cannot identify the manufacturer. Maybe you guys can put that in the comments below if you recognize it. I have identified some of the most important ICs on this mainboard. Uh, there are quite a lot of high quality parts used here. I'm going to start with some uh, uh, rail to rail op amps from analog devices. These are AD8622. There are a bunch of these scattered around and there are a few other uh, op amp models here like OP72s. I'm not going to mention all of them. Uh, this guy is an AD637 which is an RMS converter chip which makes me think that this entire section is part of the AC voltage measurements. Uh, there are some ADG1209 multiplexers, uh, we have a Max 333A quad analog switch, we have some buffers in the form of these uh, HJ4050, an inverter in the H an inverter which is an HJ14 series chip. But I think the most interesting ICs uh, in here are the ADC and the voltage reference. The ADC is the AD7122-2 from analog devices. This is a 24-bit Sigma Delta, two differential channels. In it can do up to 31 kilo samples per second. But as the datasheet shows, you do get more noise if you're sampling that fast. So that's why Unity probably decided to set the maximum sample rate at 5 kilo samples per second. Also makes you wonder if Handtech, when they're um, advertising that their meter can do 30 kilo samples per second, is that the maximum rate of their ADC which increases the noise level? I don't know because Handtech uh, scrubs the numbers of their chips so we can't tell. Uh, the AD7122 does have an internal 2.5 volt voltage reference. Uh, but I don't think they're using that one because we have the Max 6225 AESA Plus, which is a 2.5 volt uh, voltage reference with a typical Tempco of 1.5 ppm per degree Celsius. And the long term stability is coded as 20 ppm per thousand hours at 25C. And I know many people were interested in this, so now you know. It uses a pretty good and stable voltage ref, which is adequate for this class of instrument. And the last piece of the puzzle is this uh, Trion T20F256 FPGA which is for sure in charge of sampling the data from the ADC and based on that deciding which uh, relays to switch to activate the various paths for the uh, auto raging features and measurements that the this meter can do. And as a conclusion I would say that they used some very high quality parts in here. These are TI, Maxim, analog devices or so top manufacturers and the layout of the PCB as well as the assembly quality 
is as good as you can get. The only thing that I would question is maybe the position of the voltage reference in proximity to the linear voltage regulators and their heatsink, but I'm sure they've uh, done their measurements, they've calibrated the meter and observed that the variation in temperature falls within the allowed TEMCO. After all, there shouldn't be any temperature variation on those on this main board after the heat sinks um, uh, have warmed up. So if the instrument has been turned on and warmed up, which is what you should do anyways to get the most precise measurements, I don't think there should be any variation that would impact your measurements. Next, let's say a few things about the front panel where we should expect to see an application processor which is collecting data from the FPGA slash ADC and showing it on the TFT display after some processing and while also managing the front panel keypad and the back panel I.O. By the way, on my comment that the instrument doesn't have web-based view and control interface via LXI, Unity said they uh, can't implement that on this particular model because of the limited memory resources. But they are working on it for a future version um, of uh, the multimeter which is going to be higher spec. So maybe we'll see a 6.5 digit meter from them soon. Well, the application processor is an STM32F407 ARM Cortex-M4 with DSP and FPU, 1 megabyte of flash memory, 168 megahertz clock with various peripherals like Ethernet included. Here is the buzzer, which I think is dead on my unit. It's interesting how the USB connector sits on its own uh, separate smaller PCB, and that's probably because they didn't want to offset the uh, entire uh, front panel board with the height of that USB type A connector. And we probably have other support chips in here like an Ethernet Phi. Now on the uh, input terminal side we see this little guy which is a thermistor and is for sure in charge of the cold junction compensation. This uh, chip must be like an LCD driver IC and then we have um, some external uh, memory which is right behind this uh, flex going to the LCD. And that's pretty much all that's uh, worth mentioning on this uh, front panel PCB. But I want to do one last thing. I'm going to remove this PCB just so I can uh, take a quick look and test at this uh, buzzer. So here's our uh, front panel PCB. And once again, it's nice that we have these test points and labels so we can check. These are the two pins of the buzzer and I can see like a thicker trace connecting directly to this pin. And I suppose that's the positive rail. And yes, if we do a continuity check with the 5 volt test point, uh, we get a confirmation. So one of the pins of the buzzer is tied up to the plus 5 volt rail while the other one is driven with either a bipolar transistor or a MOSFET to ground. Right, so uh, I know that this is a 5 volt uh, powered buzzer. So if I take 5 volts for my power supply and I connect uh, the positive to the positive pin and the negative to the negative pin, uh, if this is an active buzzer, we should hear uh, the beeping sound. Or if it's a passive buzzer, we should um, hear some noises coming out of the buzzer as I'm um, applying and removing 5 volt power from its pins and I hear nothing so that to me is a confirmation that the buzzer itself is defective and uh, can be fixed by uh, being replaced with a 5 volt buzzer. So I have everything put back together and as a conclusion, same as with the power supply from Unity, this teardown pretty much speaks for itself. We, as you saw, we identified very high quality parts used inside with uh, high quality assembly and soldering of the PCB as well as generally in terms of mechanical assembly. The plastic looks like high quality, the metal work looks very nice. Uh, we have very good and safe wiring done inside the instrument and all of the important ICs are from good known manufacturers. Even the capacitors are from Fujicon and I've said it in the uh, power supply review video and I'm going to say it again. Unity has seriously entered the uh, high-end instrument market by selling these high quality instruments for pretty much the best price in their class. Are they perfect? No, but I think they're putting out some serious competition. I would be interested in hearing your thoughts. Do you agree with me upon seeing this turndown? If not, let me know why you don't agree with me. And if you have a particular brand of instrument that costs about the same and does better, let me know. Write everything in the comments below. That was all for today. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more content ahead. Thank you for joining me and I'll catch you in the next video.